Hi everyone, it's Joseph Yates from Feathers Analytics and today I'm going to review two of my most recent blog posts and show how we can build an income statement in Power BI. Let's go check it out. Okay, so here we are in the Power BI report and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the data model view. So our data model has five tables. We have our fact table that contains all the information we're going to need for all our report. We have our calendar table, which is going to drive all of our date and time intelligence in our report. Uh, and then another main dimension is our GL table. So this contains uh, additional information about some of the transactions that happened from our source system, from our accounting system. Off of this GL table, I've spun off two additional tables, uh, category and subcategory, and that's going to come into play a little bit later. Back into the report, this is the beginning of our income statement. So we've made no enhancements. This is just information that's present in our source system that we're pulled into Power BI. So we have some years across the columns of our matrix visual, uh, but probably the most important thing right now is we have some headings and some subheadings. So we have uh, revenue and expense line items with some details underneath. This is definitely a good start, but I think to create a true income statement, we're gonna need some additional information here. We're gonna need a line item heading for net income. So the difference between revenue and expense, because that's a measure of performance for a given year. Uh, and even on top of net income, we're gonna to wanna to see retained income. So how much money have we made uh, net of any expenses of a given year? And we're gonna to wanna to see retained income both at the beginning and the end of this reporting period. So those line items don't appear out of our source system. We don't have line items for net income and retained income. So we're gonna to have to add that in the report. And to do that, I'm going to pop into Power BI uh, Power Query Editor. So here we are in the Power Query Editor, and this is where I'm going to add those additional rows that we need to power our matrix visual. Uh, so right now we just have revenue and expense. I'm going to spin off another applied step in our query, and the function I'm going to use is called table insert rows. So insert, and there we go, this top one here. I'm going to call that on the previous step and rather than type out code, I'm just going to paste it. And when I commit that, we can see that we've added net income, retained income at the beginning and the end of the period. Uh, so to finish all that out, I'm actually just going to click uh, onto one that I've completed earlier. And in this category table, we can see I also added a column uh, that can sort our rows in the order that we need. So we want to see revenue, expense, net income, uh, and then retained income in that order. And that's going to be really important when we build some of our DAX measures later. Uh, so I'm just going to close and apply that, and we'll get back into uh, our main report. Back into the Power BI report, we can see that the visual actually hasn't changed. Although we created those additional line items, those additional category headers, there's no data for them. We're still just returning revenue and expense. And the reason for that is that the measure that's driving this visual is this year to date amount. So what that's doing is it's aggregating all the transactions that are coming in from our source system uh, and just plotting them on the visual. But we have no associated transactions for those category headers that we just created. So we're gonna have to spin off a different DAX measure so that we can actually populate those line items, populate those rows, with the measures that we want. So to do this, I'm going to create a new DAX measure called subtotals. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to return uh, the net amount of all of the line item categories before it. So if you remember, if actually if I go back into the data view, you remember that when we created that category table, I have this category sort column. So we're going to build a DAX measure on the logic that net income is line three. I want to return uh, the sum of everything above line item number three, so two and one. Uh, and then that hopefully is going to bring some values into our visual that we can use here. So let's take a look at the DAX measure that I built to achieve this. I'm going to go into the fact table on the right hand side, and I'm going to look at year to date subtotals. So the part I'm going to focus on of this measure is this part in the middle. So we're using the calculate function to adjust and to sort of change our year-to-date amount measure, which right now is, is uh, the measure that's driving the visual. So I'm changing it slightly that I only want to look at year-to-date amount when the category value is less than the line item that we're looking at. So when I was just in the data view, we were looking at the net income line item, 
that had a category sort value of three. Using this calculate statement, I just want to return the net amount for all the line items that have a lower value than three. So again, that was two and one. Uh, so I'm going to commit that measure and then drop it into our visual. So I actually don't want to just drop that subtotals measure that we created into the visual because I still want year to date amount um, to display and be present for the revenue and expense line items because that's all good. Like we like what we see there. So I'm going to create a new measure called income statement because we're dropping it into our income statement um, that's going to use the switch function. And what this is going to say is that we're going to go line item by line item and take a look at which one are we looking at and what measure do we want to return for that particular line item. So the first thing I'm going to look at is when category sort equals three. So again, that was our net income line item. We want to return year to date subtotals. Otherwise, we want to continue to return this year to date amount. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to drop that into our visual. And I'm going to take away year to date amount. Let's shorten that a little bit. And so this is looking better. We still have revenue is calculating, uh, expenses calculating, and now we have some line items for net income. So that's perfect. Um, it does look like it's netting correctly. 66 minus 37 is 29. Uh, and then the same for 2019 and 2020. But we have all these subcategories under net income. We're seeing uh, property sales, advertising, office expense, all four um, are displaying under this. And we don't really want that detail because that detail is present in the line items above. Uh, and really, we don't care about the subcategories for uh, some of these line items that we created. We just care about the summary. So I need to adjust uh, our DAX measure slightly. And to do that, all I had to do is create a little bit of an extra layer uh, of logic. So when our uh, category sort is equal to three, is equal to net income, we also want to say uh, count the rows in the subcategory uh, table. So that's the other table that we spun off of the GL table. We would just want to do a logical test there to see if the count rows in that table is greater than one. There are going to be no corresponding rows in that subcategory table for those three line items that we created. So when I drop uh, this slightly adjusted measure into our visual, and take off the existing one. Uh, let's close that again, get that out the way. Uh, if I when I go to expand that net income, toggle this expand and collapse button, there's no extra line item. So now it's nice, clean and tidy. Uh, and we can move on to try and build out the logic to see how can we return values for our retained income for the beginning and the end of the period. Before we continue building out the logic of our income statement measure, we're going to have to create a new DAX measure for the two retained income line items. So let's take a step back for a second. Let's snap back. Retained income is a cumulative measure. So that aggregates and increases or decreases year over year. So far in our report, we've only been looking at line items in a given year. So revenue expense and net income for 2018, 2019 or 2020. The measure resets every year. We need a little bit different behavior for the two retained income line items. So we need to create a new measure. Uh, and I did that by creating an all subtotals measure. So we still want to subtotal all the line items above, but rather than just the line items for uh, a particular year, we want to go all the way back to the beginning uh, of when we started capturing transactions. So if I click into that measure, we can see that it's actually exactly the same as our year to date subtotals measure. I just have an added line or an added filter onto that calculate statement. So we want to filter the dates in our calendar table for when the calendar date is less than the max of the particular filtered context that we're looking in. So um, I took this and I added an extra line item to our income statement measure. If I click in here, I just started with the end of year retained earnings or retained income at first. So Again, we did a logical test when the category sort is equal to five and the count rows, we want to return all subtotals instead of year to date subtotals. And then for everything else, for our revenue and for expense, we still want to return the year to date amount. So I'm going to take that, put it back into our visual and again, collapse everything. And this is looking good once again. So our net income 29 to 08 minus five, 
For 2018, retained income at the end of the period is the same as the net income. That's because there are no years prior to 2018. For 2019, it's 237 because that's 29 plus 208. And then for 2020, it actually goes down because we had a bad year when our expense was uh, greater than our revenue. Uh, and so our retained income at the end of the period was down to 232. Now, we just have one more line item left, line item number four, our retained income at the beginning of the period. The logic behind that is exactly the same as the retained income at the end of the period. We just need to return the retained income from the last period though. So we just need to shift that retained income at the end of the period forward one year and then we're good to go. So again, I made a slight adjustment uh, to our income statement measure we have one more here. We're looking at uh, line item number four, the beginning of year retained income. And this time I'm wrapping a calculate statement around the all subtotals measure. So I want to calculate all subtotals for the previous year of our uh, calendar table, the date of our calendar table. Um, and what that's gonna do again is just return the retained income from the previous year. And when I drop that into our visual, There we go, and I drop that into our visual and take the last year's one away and click out. We can see that this 29 is just shifted forward a year. We ended 2018 with 29, so we're starting 2019 with 29. Same thing with the 237. Um, I can even expand all these just to show we have none of those uh, unnecessary details underneath. Uh, and here we are, we're left with a nice income statement. We started out with just revenue and expense and we added some of those additional line items with logic that's populating them. Um, properly and exactly what we want to see. So now this report is more actionable. It's going to help bring better business intelligence to our organization. All right, and that's it. We covered quite a few different things there. We went into the Power Query Editor. We built some complex DAX sort of step by step. Uh, and the final result was sort of a basic income statement, uh, but something that we can definitely expand upon uh, and add to and customize as our needs require. Thank you for checking this out and I'll see you all next time.